yeah. Whoa. Well, uh, I don't know what what uh, it was. A, it was uh, emotional, I guess. Was it? Did you like it? Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's quite a it's quite a downer for old Miller. I think he's got a lot of conflicting uh, emotions. You know, it's sort of you know when you're looking for somebody and it's your job to find them and bring them home, and then you find them and they're they're dead. Yeah, it's sort of a failure. So I think he takes it personally. You know? Was there any particular scene in last season that was that was harder for you to do than any other, or, or more engaging as an actor than any other? Well, I'd say probably that last scene. You know, find, finding it just the the whole r- working toward uh, Julie Mao. You know, Julie Mao really got under Miller's skin. You know, in a way that he she really rocked his worldview. He was M- Miller grew up on the streets. He's a, he's learned to take care of himself. Survival, right? That comes number one. You got to have your basic needs taken care of. And when your basic needs are threatened, that becomes your world. You know, I need to be able to eat, sleep, survive, be safe, take care of myself. That's survival. And when you don't have parents and you're growing up in a in a system the way Miller did, because mining in space is really dangerous so people die all the time so on series they have sort of a an orphanage for these kids that don't have parents you know and the whole parental thing has changed 200 years from now anyway it's more communal but miller really sort of got the short end of that stick growing up so his his uh, mo was me first and fuck everybody else uh, and there's a you know there's a way you become street smart. You learn how to you know, how to do that. And then he confronts this girl who's this little rich kid who's beautiful, and her dad is some mega millionaire. I mean, the opposite of who Miller is. Not only that, but this girl gave up all of that to go fight for people who she doesn't even know, who's not even her race, for my race, the Belters. Who the fuck is this person? You know, who literally does the opposite, uh, diametrically uh, opposite worldview to to my own? Here's a person who sacrificed her, all of herself for people she doesn't know. Whereas I'm a person who sacrifices everybody else so that I can survive. So that really got under my skin, you know. Once I figured out that she wasn't just doing that to uh, piss off her dad. The way most of these, you know, young people do, that it was more than that. Um, that really, you know, sends him off on this journey, and it really throws a monkey wrench in my worldview and forces me to change in some way. So that was fascinating to me. I love the character. I love that through line. I love where it where it goes. And I love I love the guy. I really do. Yeah, it's like oil and water, you know. He's the last guy you'd want on a spaceship. He's never been on a spaceship. Doesn't like space. He's want, you know, he likes his he likes his little city and his world. And these people, he's the outsider, you know. So hat's fucking gone. Everything's, you know, everything's gone. He doesn't have anything. He's got literally the clothes on his back and his gun and his and Julie Mao's necklace. That's his, all of his possessions. Uh, so it's great. It's really, really fun. You know, really enjoyed it. It's what? I think uh, at the uh, beginning, yeah, he's pretty upset about some stuff. You know, uh, yeah. But uh, but he certainly has. He has a great a great arc. During season two, you know, it really, it really, it really, go, it really goes places. I got to tell you, I'm excited for you guys to see it. These writers are so fantastic. You know, the books are great, but the guys who are turning it into the show, we we are so lucky. You know, we really are to be able to do some high quality science fiction uh, where we have the money to bring some really terrific effects to it, but at the heart of it. 
are these characters that I personally am really, really love. So we're very, very pleased and fortunate. A lot of people um, who, who watch the show that I've spoken to love, love, love the show, everything about it. And a lot of them said they had a really hard time finding themselves invested in Miller. You know, he was so tough and so right. raw. Oh, yeah. That they're like, he's like, I don't know what I really feel about this Miller character. You know, the others are like, they're right, the good right, guys, right. you know, this whole thing. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, but then we do find out as they intersect yeah. that not really Miller's a good guy in his own way, too. Right, you know, right, in right. In that perceived view. Yeah, well, that... I know people like that. Uh, I think those people are underrepresented. Uh, I think, you know, it, everything, we're used to everything being easy. We're used to being fed everything at the beginning, and here's characters, and you need to like them. And here's why you like them. And it's all easy and nice, and frankly, I'm fucking bored as fuck with all that shit. I want challenging characters I want to be able to work reach a little bit I want to be introduced to people and worlds that I don't know and that I'm not familiar with and uh, and uh, for me it was a great opportunity to to not have to worry about uh, being liked you know and Miller doesn't give a fuck whether you like him or not and he does have integrity but it's an integrity that you're gonna have to reach for he's not gonna fucking wear it on his sleeve and show you that he's a it has a man of integrity you either you do what you do you know because a lot of people are like well i'll be good if you're gonna be good i'm gonna wait to see if you're good and then i'll be good yeah i'm not gonna show you anything you know and let's let's see what what the car what cards land on the table and you know then you'll find out i love personally love characters like that you know yeah, especially if they can surprise you. So I'm hoping that, you know, I'm hoping, you know, I don't know, it's nice, maybe it's it's nice not to be, uh, to be, to be loved. <laughs> what about Holden? How is he going to get along with Holden? It was almost like a bush in a Sunday. I know, it was great, right? Yeah. But they're too oil and watery, you know? They really do like each other. But, but I don't think Miller would ever really admit it too much. And it's that oil and water kind of tension between them where it's two guys who like each other but they're so different that they know it'll never work. So there's that. And I think Miller's relationship is sort of like that with everybody. He's, you know, he's a very kind of like, he's got his little wall of protection around him. But who he is inside is a different story. 